Building your own pond filter is really easy. I only have three main rules. Number one, making sure it will be easy to clean. Number two, making sure everything is sized correctly for the pond. And number three, making sure that it won't siphon the dirty water it's captured back into the pond if the pump shuts off. That's going to be really important for this filter I'm making as it's going to be running on solar. So if you're interested, stick around and I'll show you how it's built. If you don't know me, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds and water features without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website ozponds.com. This filter is going to be used for a solar powered stream and small pond slash pooling area. I've already made a video on the plan for this project, so if you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description. In this video, I just want to focus on the filter and how it's built. I'll try and link any other helpful videos and items you'll need in the description. So let's start with the materials and tools I'm using. I've got a round container that I estimate holds about 70 litres, that's just under 20 gallons. I have a couple of short pieces of 25mm or 1 inch pressure pipe, two 25mm or 1 inch elbow fittings, although I will add a third later in the video, a 25mm or 1 inch T piece fitting, a short piece of 90mm or three and a half inch stormwater pipe, an end cap for the stormwater pipe, and a 90 degree elbow fitting for that pipe also. Then we have a 90 mil or three and a half inch uni seal, a small piece of shade cloth and a cable tie, and some clay balls as the filter media. For the tools, I have a hacksaw, a file, a drill saw that's just big enough to create a hole for the chunky bit of the uni seal. Here's a better look at that chunky butt. You'll also need a drill, along with an 8mm drill bit. So first we drill a hole in the top of the container and then put the uni seal in. This will be where the water exits the filter into the stream. <laughs> then you get ready to be annoyed, frustrated and borderline hysterical as you try and push the 90mm stormwater pipe into the uni seal. This is where the file comes in handy to bevel the edges on the pipe and even to make the hole in the barrel just slightly more accommodating. <laughs> even so, I still resorted to some grease to help get the pipe in. Finally, a success. Then I just put on the 90 degree elbow fitting. There's no need to glue any of these fittings as they're not under a tremendous amount of pressure. Now it's time to create the inflow. We want to pump water into the base of the filter and have it rise up through some kind of media that's colonised by good bacteria. In this case, I'm using the aquaponic clay balls. But we need to make sure that the water won't flow back into the pond or reservoir when the pump shuts off. To do that, we bring the pipe work over the top of the filter and add a breather pipe. And here's why that's important. The pond, or in this case reservoir, sits below the filter. Water is pumped from here up into the filter. The water flows up through the filter and out into the stream and then it returns to the pond or reservoir. If we don't have a breather pipe, a siphon is created and the filter drains back into the pond or reservoir when the pump shuts off. Some people will add a check valve, and I have in the past, but they always tend to fail. But if we add a breather pipe, when the pump shuts off, air is sucked into the pipe and the siphon is instantly broken. Here's how that sounds when I shut the pump off on one of my existing filters. So here's how the plumbing is connected together. One elbow down the bottom and one at the top and the breather pipe should be about water level inside the filter. 
I used a hacksaw to cut the 25mm or 1 inch pipe to size. I want it so it's just sitting on the edge of the filter. This will make it easier to hide with rock and plants when the time comes. I've pointed the elbow fitting that's at the bottom to the side. This is so that the water will swirl around and hopefully any solid materials inside the water will settle in the bottom of the filter while the clean water rises up through the media to the top. Now to remove those solids, we need a portal that reaches down into the bottom of the filter. Here I'm using some of the 90mm or three and a half inch pipe. I put the end cap on the top with a small eight millimeter hole drilled in. The hole will let any trapped air escape. I notched out some slits to allow the dirty water access to the portal when we need to flush out the filter. On other filters I've built, I've used a clean out port at the base of the filter to allow the filter to be completely drained and cleaned. That works really great on filters where you can easily daylight the valve. This filter is being hidden in the mound that will form the garden and stream. So the clean out port on this filter is borrowed from my bog in a stream design. The pipe allows me to stick my pond vacuum down there and completely drain out the filter and remove any muck that's built up. Like I mentioned, on this particular filter, I'm using aquaponic clay balls. I've got plenty of these on hand from an old aquaponic system, so I might as well use them up. Alternatively, you could use bio balls like I did on my high flow water filter design. These are pretty cheap on Amazon, etc. I like the clay balls for this application because they can allow water to move through quickly, but they're also quite porous. Remember, this filter is going to be powered by solar, so the flow rates will be constantly changing. Porous media like this has the potential to create different oxygen zones within the media itself. I like that because different oxygen zones grow different types of bacteria that play different roles in processing nitrogen. Anyway, I've gotten sidetracked. To keep the clay balls inside the filter and not floating away down the stream, I put the little piece of shade cloth over the outflow and secured it with the cable tie. I buried the filter up in the berm with the soil I excavated from the reservoir and the pooling slash pond area. I used some bricks and rock to sort of secure the inflow and clean out portal in place and then filled it up with the clay balls. Oh, and that's right. I wasn't happy with how the breather pipe was sitting in regards to the water level. This is easily avoidable if you measure correctly, but I'm just a wing it kind of guy. So I had to add this little elbow and extra pipe to bring the air hole up higher. Anyway, now that that's done, it's fully adjustable. So that's how the filter was made. And in a future video, I'll hook it all up and show how it'll be hidden. And there's lots of different ways you can alter this filter or any of the other filters that I've built and shown on my channel. The important things are that it's easy to clean, size properly in relation to the pond and that it won't siphon empty if the pump shuts off. I do have a PDF that includes some handy formulas that I use when creating my ponds, so check that out on my website if you're interested. Anyway, I hope you found this video and the resources I linked in the description helpful. If you did, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.